Lin Feng, a college student from Earth, is reincarnated into his alternate self in a world where martial artists rule. In this world, strength is everything. And those with powerful martial spirits are revered and feared. Lin Feng, who used to be trash, is determined to use his newfound strength to rise to the top and exact revenge on those who wronged him in his past life. Let's see him do just that. A young man falls to the ground and coughs in pain, his vision blurring as he struggled to stay conscious, the metallic taste of blood filling his mouth as all he could focus on was the searing pain. His enemy, another young man, grabs his face. Don't be afraid. You'll be relieved soon. Lean Feng, he said, before slamming Lean Feng back to the ground, killing him. Laughing to himself, he declares that he, Lean Hung, will take his place as the young lord of the Lin family, and that if you have any resentment, then resent this world. This is because the world is decided by martial arts. Through your martial prowess, your fate is decided as well as your life and death. In this world, respect is earned with martial arts. The weak are humiliated while the strong look down on the world from lofty heights. Weak martial artists can lift thousands of pounds of weight, while the strongest martial artists can cut off rivers and split mountains in half. A person's martial spirit is divided into four types. Nature spirits that harness fire, ice, and lightning. Weapon spirits like knives, lances, and swords. I have no idea why this is a thing. Beast spirits like the white tiger, violent ape, and crazy rhinoceros and unique variants that are considered to be more powerful compared to the previous three like the madness spirits and immortal spirits. One's power and achievements as a martial artist is linked closely to the type of martial spirit they have from birth, aka this is just magic eugenics. Some martial artists are so strong that they're called martial kings. They know everything and can travel across the universe and are probably immortal as well. Meanwhile, our MC, Lin Feng, is a reincarnate. He's a college senior from Hua Xia Jian Nun back on good old Earth and got isekai to this world because of a car accident. I wonder if it's a truck that did the isekai, or maybe the transforming truck. Either way, his soul traveled across the world, or more accurately the multiverse, and ended up possessing someone that's also named Lin Feng, the guy that got his ass beat by Lin Hung. In the eyes of everyone, this Lin Hung is just dog trash, bullied and got beaten half to death by Lin Hung. Our protagonist used this opportunity to possess the body that Lin Feng has. We're doing invasion of the body snatchers now. Lin Feng wakes up in the Lin family mansion in Yanzhou City, and as he looks around at the unfamiliar room, he realizes that he's crossed over, remarking that his body is complete garbage, or used to be complete garbage. He vowed to himself at this point, as he realizes that he's now the Lin Feng of this world, he won't let himself be bullied anymore. And now that he has his second chance, he won't let tragedy repeat itself. In his thoughts, he recalls that the strong are respected. Power decides everything. These are the rules of this world. In order to become a martial artist, he shouldn't just have talent that's above other people, but also need to have a strong heart and an overwhelmingly tenacious will, something that the previous young master Lin Feng doesn't have, which is why people see him as weak. To be fair, when you keep getting bullied like that, you won't get strong anyhow. However, since he's an isekai character and suffered painful things including his previous body's death, Lin Feng thinks that he's become tougher than ever. Which is probably right, since nothing beats getting hit by Truck Kun. As he was monologuing with himself, he felt his body's martial spirit moving. Well, he thinks it's the martial spirit. Instead, it's the remnants of the original Lin Feng's soul as it merges with the current Lin Feng's own. Lin Feng sighs as he feels the power flow through him and sees the original Lin Feng's martial spirit, a small animal spirit snake. Which is gonna be something important later, I can tell. He thinks that said spirit is a bit weak and looks at his new martial spirit, which is pitch black and looks like a strong, unique variant. Lin Feng calls it the dark spirit. Lin Feng feels confident now that he has two martial spirits and moves out of his room to train and sees an open courtyard with stone pillars rising up from the ground where his past self-trained. Good timing. I want to see if my cultivation has risen now that I have my dark spirit. Lin Feng said to himself as he gathers his dark energy into a single attack. Martial technique. Nine heavy waves. Causing a force to project from his palm and destroying all the stone pillars, just as he predicted. A pretty impressive feat for someone who got beaten half to death. This strength has reached 7,000 pounds of power. I am no longer trash, he said to himself. As someone called out to him, it was his father, Lin Hai. Have your wounds healed already? He asked. Yes, your son has already recovered. 
Lin Hai happy at this, and is in some disbelief as he couldn't believe that Lin Feng has already recovered from such deep wounds. He had help from his Isekade soul. I don't think that counts. To cause such heavy injuries, it's obvious they were targeting you. Tell your father the truth. Was this done by your two cousins? His father asked. Lin Feng, though, requested his father to let him handle his two cousins. You don't need to worry about me anymore, he said. His father was shocked. It's as if Lin Feng has turned into a different person and has become very unyielding. If he has changed for the better due to this incident, then it's a blessing in disguise. He thought to himself, Brah, it's most definitely not a blessing. The MC really did die. Lin Hai looks at the training ground and asks what happened to the stone pillars. Stone pillars? Oh, I just tested my power for a little bit after recovering. It's been a while, so I got a little rusty. Lin Feng said in reply, a non-answer hide his power. But his father realized the truth. That blast has at least 7,000 pounds of force. Lin Feng thought as he looked at the destruction in front of him. That means my son has already entered the seventh chi layer, but he remained in the fifth chi layer not too long ago. Fifth chi layer is two levels lower than the seventh chi layer. Son, you finally had a breakthrough. I, Lin Hai, surely have an amazing son. Lin Hai thought to himself, technically your son, but I digress. Good, come with me to the clan meeting tomorrow. Lin Hai sent to Lin Feng. I want to see exactly how they will kick out me, the family head. Lin Feng is undeterred thanks to his new power, stating that he will definitely live up to your expectations. Lin Hai was pleased by this, but tells Lin Feng to sleep early as his wounds have just healed. Honestly, a pretty good idea, but our MC doesn't do that. Instead, he's in the roof of his room and looked out to the sky, which is technically still resting, but semantics. I'd always thought that those martial arts stories about gratitude and revenge only existed in novels. Yet I crossed over here. He said to himself, now, I can finally live in this world that I longed for. Thank you for giving me this chance, the past lean fun, he said, clenching his fists as he vowed to pay back tooth for a tooth on those that looked down on them. You will live an extraordinary life, a life that's intense and fierce. The entirety of the Lin family went to their fighting stadium for the clan meeting, with some already gossiping about the upcoming debacle. Did you hear? Not only are the eldest uncle and third uncle here, but the grand elder is also here. Looks like they're all aiming for the family head seat. I heard that Lin Fong was beaten so badly by someone that people of the Yun Hai sect had to personally carry him back. What a disgrace. Already there's some gossip mongers out and about. The eldest uncle has always been displeased with the family head. I'm sure he'll be picking on the young lord today. Yeah, maybe the Lin family will have a new family head after today. They really don't like our MC, don't they? Still, Lin Fong and Lin Hai walked into the fighting stadium together in this sort of disparagement. You're still alive. What a lucky piece of trash. Lin Yun, one of their relatives said with a sneer. And you would have the face to attend the clan meeting. Are you not afraid of being ridiculed by everyone present? Lin Feng's hackles rose at Lin Yun's disparaging words and was about to say something really bad, but Lin Hai stops him. Don't worry, son. As your cousin, Lin Yun has no discipline. It is pointless to argue with him right now. Wait until the clan meeting begins, he said, before his brow furrowed, as Lin Hai was furious at all the stuff everyone is saying about both him and his son. I'll shut them all up. Badass dad is badass. Lin Feng accepts this and walks off with his father, while Lin Yun continues to be a smarmy dick. Haha. <laughs> Retreating back to your turbo shell, he called out as Lin Feng and Lin Hai walked off as the family meeting begins, with Lin Hao Ron, the third uncle of the Lin family, speaks first and he decides to talk shit, disrespectful. Elders, people from the Yun Hai sect paid us a visit a few days ago. It was supposed to be an honorable event. It turned out that they were escorting a half-dead piece of trash back to us. It was an enormous disgrace to us, the Lin family. How Ron said with a smirk so smarmy, it's tempting to smack it out of his face. He then proceeds to talk about how the Lin family should kick out Lin Feng as he doesn't think that Lin Feng deserves to be in their family, which is a move times 1,000. Lin Hai immediately calls out how Ron for this. You have no right to spout unwarranted remarks when I, the family head, have it to speak, he said furiously. Lin Hai will take care of his own family business, he said, and commanded how Ron to sit his ass back down. Next to him, Lin Ba Dao proceeds to lecture Lin Hai, saying, even though you're the family head, our third brother is still one of the leaders of the clan. He's doing this for the clan's reputation. Lin Hai doesn't believe Jack though, stating clearly that Ba Dao and Hao Ron are just eyeing his family seat, 
and that he knows what the two of them are planning. Also, Ba Dao literally means overbearing, author in Hiding Jack. Lin Hai then stands up and offers to fight it out with Ba Dao. If Ba Dao wins, Lin Hai and his son would leave for good. If Lin Hai wins, then Ba Dao and Hao Ron should shut their mouths. To be honest, he should have just said that the two of them should exile themselves or something. Ba Dao stands up as well, implying that he accepts. What? You think I'm afraid of you? He asked derisively. Meanwhile, the other elders are also talking with each other, with them asking the Grand Elder if they should teach Lin Hai a lesson. Then let us watch and see if Lin Hai still has the strength to remain as the family head. The Grand Elder said, What a dick. Still, the next thing that they see left all the higher elders in shock, as they feel a deathly chill and Lin Hai unleashes his power. Thousand Mile Icebound, much to Ba Dao's fear as he was frozen solid, before Lin Hai breaks the ice that Ba Dao was bound to, causing him to cough blood violently. Pretty hardcore move, sealing your enemy in ice to break his defense. Ba Dao falls to the ground, defeated and cold, with the spectators rumbling at how Lin Hai was able to defeat Ba Dao in a single blow. As expected, one shouldn't mess with the family head, they said, and yet they still talk sh about his son. What hypocrites. Back to the Grand Elders, the main one looks consideringly at Lin Hai. He's already cultivated his icebound to the eighth layer. No wonder it's this strong, he thought to himself, a pretty high tier around Martial Heavenly Realm. Lin Hai looks back to the elders and tells them to continue the clan meeting, but the Grand Elder replies, Oh, Lin Hai, he can need to get that serious. As the family head, you set a great example by constantly improving your cultivation. I believe you will motivate the Lin family's disciples to train even harder. Smarmy kiss ass. He was A-OK -okay with the rest of the elders replacing Lin Hai. The Grand Elder then dismisses everyone, calling the meeting off. Seeing this, Lin Hai states that he will leave first alongside his son. While he was leaving, however, how Ron and his son made their opinions known Lin Hai. I want to see just how much longer you can protect that trash. And that's right. That trash is our Lin family's shame. <laughs> Lin Hao Ron, put a leash on your son. What kind of father are you if you can't teach your son any manners? Lin Hao retorts, a really good one as well. I'll keep that in mind. While they're arguing, Lin Feng, seeing all this, interjects. Lin Yun, you keep blabbering that I'm trash day in and day out. If you were to find out that you are weaker than me in reality, how humiliated will you be? He said. Lin Yun couldn't believe what he just heard. Ah, did your brain stop working? Are you dreaming? How can you trash compare to me? He asked for the mocking smile while pointing at Lin Feng. Not only is he a d he also looks pretty bad with that grin on his face. Lin Feng isn't deterred though, and tells Lin Yun to fight me, if you dare, which should have been his first clue that something isn't right. Still, Lin Yun continued, I'm not afraid of you, he said, and his own father encouraged it, as well by saying to him that he should teach this trash a good lesson. Lin Yun agreed to this and tells Lin Feng that if you can take three blows from me, then I lose. How about it? Don't say I'm not giving you a chance. He's really courting death here. Lin Feng, though, is tired of this bull and said that if you can take one blow from me, then I lose. This pissed off Lin Yun and made the crowd go nuts. Is he tired of living or what? What boastful talk coming from that trash? They said as they watched this unfold. He jumped to the arena in a rage. What? How dare you insult me? I'll make you trash wish you were dead today. And I wish I was dead from that grammar. Cut the bull. <laughs> Lin Feng said as his pitch black dark spirit's aura began to leak out of him. Lin Yun's own aura also leaks out as he excitedly begins to charge his power. But he wouldn't be able to unleash it as Lin Feng attacks first with his martial technique. Nine heavy waves. What? Why do I feel such pressure from him? Lin Yun thought as he looked terrified at Lin Feng's sheer power. As he should. Lin Feng's attack hit Lin Yun square in the chest, and a sheer force was enough to fling him away. Cough blood and contort his face into something pretty horrendous. Like, just look at it. He almost looks like a zombie there. Wow, that Lin Feng beat Lin Yun to the ground with just one blow. Is he still the same trash young master? The crowd said in amazement as they looked at the spectacle. Lin Yun was dismayed at this state of events, calling out that it shouldn't be possible for Lin Feng to be this strong and exert such force as he should have been only at the fifth qi layer. Lower in terms of qi layer to Lin Yun at his cultivation state. Lin Yun, you always say that I'm trash, that you can't even withstand a single blow from me. Where does that leave you? Lin Feng said in response to Lin Yun, he then turned to Hao Ron and was about to reprimand him as well. 
And you, as a senior, you keep bringing up the word trash over and over. Mean fun began. But how Ron, flustered at the defeat of his son, retorts, What? I haven't even said anything after you hurt my son. What right do you have to ridicule me? He roared out in anger. His father's slash son duo is so troublesome. Lin Feng then gives a pretty epic burn here, saying that since Hao Ran's son is worse than Lin Feng, then his son is also trash. This completely enrages Lin Yun, who tells Lin Feng that even if he's slightly stronger than him, honestly, he's plenty strong compared to you who got folded by one attack. It doesn't give Lin Feng the right to flaunt his power, and that there's countless people who are stronger than him. Flaunting? That's uncalled for. I'm simply returning the favor to you and your father. Lin Feng said in reply to this, A tooth for a tooth and payback twofold. That's how I do things. Those who shame others, they too will be shamed. With those parting jabs, Lin Feng turns away from Lin Yun and descends from the combat arena. Pretty good sentiment to live by. Lin Hav is proud of his son's progress, saying, Well done. Before the two of them left, in his thoughts, he's proud of the fact that his son is finally growing up, rapidly improving in his cultivation and saying philosophical words. Why exactly that's something to be proud of I will never know. Once his snake martial spirit is awakened in the future, he'll understand just how strong the talent he has inherited from his mother, he thought to himself. In the business, we call this foreshadowing. Back in the clan compound, Lin Feng makes preparations to go back to the Yun Hai sect in order to train his cultivation more, much to Lin Hai's dismay. Son, what's wrong with cultivating at home? Why go back to the sect? Father, some things simply can't be avoided. If I stay home to train, there will be gossip about how my father is sheltering me. Plus, how else can I grow to become a strong martial artist? He said, honestly makes sense, and being thought of as hiding behind someone's skirts is humiliating. Eventually, Li Hai relents to his son's wishes, but asks him to be careful as Lin Feng heads out into the world and the Yun Hai sect, where he's going to get stronger still, fighting stronger cultivators and sharpening his blade. It took 10 days for Lin Feng to reach the Yun Hai sect and he's immediately stopped by two guards. Lin Feng, you actually have the face to come back here. If you get it, then get lost. Trash. They said to him in disdain. Lin Feng, though, is unmoved. I haven't been kicked out of the sect, so why can't I come back? And why didn't you guys stop the guy who just went in? Instead, you're here bothering me. I'm sensing some nepotism here. That guy just now is an inner sect disciple. Your trash can't even begin to compare with him. One of the guards said, much to our MC's irritation as he sees them as bullies who prey on the weak. Looks like you guys are set on stopping me. He said as he prepared his power, don't blame me for getting rough. Lin Feng swipes his hand and unleashes his strength, sending the two guards flying off. I'm in a hurry, so I'll let you guys off this time. But if there's a next time, I'll cripple your cultivation. He then spurs his horse up the path and reaches the star pavilion. Good riddance to those bastards. Hope we don't see them again. He greets the elder that was sitting down in the star pavilion, telling him that he has come to borrow some skill books. Oh, you're seventh chi layer, so you can only access star pavilion's first floor. You can get at most two books. Come find me once you are done picking. This shocks Lin Feng, as it only took the elder a single glance to see his current cultivation level. This elder is probably a hidden boss or something. Lin Feng immediately notices this as well, noting that in his past life, there was a TV show where the monk that was pretending to be just a servant in a Shaolin temple was just as inscrutable as the elder he sees right now, meaning that this elder was a hidden expert and is probably stronger than his current level, deepening his resolve to train harder so that he can hold his own. In Lin Feng's thoughts, he ponders, however strong you are, there always is someone stronger. Huh. Yes, Lin Feng. Make sure to keep that stuck in your brain. You'll survive longer. Once inside the Star Pavilion proper, Lin Feng immediately browses the various skill books in the library. He sees skills like the Seven Kills Fist, a skill suitable for those that possess a physical martial spirit, Hurricane Slice, a skill for those with a winged nature martial spirit, and the Rampaging Bull, a skill that's made for beast martial spirits. Usually, Martial artists have to choose skills that are based on their martial spirit's nature. Beast martial spirits need beast skills, sword martial spirits need sword skills, and so on. If you try to learn a skill that has no affinity with your current spirit, the martial artist won't be able to draw even 25% of the skill's power. However, due to Lin Feng's unique variant Dark Spirit, he can bypass these restrictions and get any spell that he wants. A.K.A. he can just pick a skill that he likes, the Lucky Bastard. 
So his first choice is the sword drawing skill, a skill wherein if the user's blade is drawn fast and successfully, then it's a guaranteed one-hit kill, suitable for those that have a sword martial spirit. Lin Feng has heard of this skill before, as it's different from other sword skills. A swordsman's most critical moment is when he's drawn his sword. If there's even a single second of delay, he won't be able to do his attack in time and will be put in an unfavorable position. Basically, this skill is made to maximize the damage of the sword during the process of drawing it out, like Aijutsu. Lin Feng immediately picks this skill up and decides he needs to find another martial skill that complements the sword drawing skill. He immediately notes that he needs to have incredible speed to draw his blade as well as run away if he fails using the sword drawing skill and decides he needs to get an agility skill to compensate. He decides on Fleeting Shadow, a skill that can turn a user as fast as a flickering light when trained to the highest rank. A good combo with something like Sword Drawing Skill. The Elder was impressed by Lin Feng's choice. He's the first practitioner in the sect to ever get the Sword Drawing Skill book, but warns Lin Feng that if he fails even once, then he might throw his life away. Seeing his resolve and the fact that he picked Fleeting Shadow to complement Sword Drawing Skill, he decides to throw Lin Feng the bone. Your eyes are pretty sharp, a youngster who deserves much respect. As he said this, the elder takes out a sword that he was using as a belt. How he didn't cut himself with that, I will never know. Instead of it being useless here with me. Why don't you take it and go have some fun? He said with a small smirk on his face. Lin Feng thanks the elder for his generosity, but the elder rebukes him. Save the gratitude. I can't afford it. All right. Now go train. Lin Feng still thanks the Elder once again and promises to take care of his blade before running off to train himself. The Elder notes down Lin Feng, thinking to himself that it's been a while since he's seen an interesting young man. This Elder knows his stuff and recognizes the MC's worth. He has unprecedented potential in martial arts training. Moreover, he has proper etiquette. There are not that many youngsters like him nowadays. Kind have to agree with the Elder here. I can't wait to see what Lin Feng can do. Lin Feng trained both skills for seven days straight in a tall mountain. By that time, he had finally grasped both the sword drawing skill and fleeting shadow. My cultivation must have increased a lot. How exciting. He said to himself as he stared at the huge gashes his sword slashes had done on the mountain. One of the slashes is a pretty big one to boot the final slash, if you will. Lin Feng was exhausted, however, as the sheer amount of training he did tax his body. I should find a place to relax my muscles, he said, before jumping off of the mountain and into the ground below. If his muscles are aching, why the hell did he jump so far down? He does land safely, however, and sees a canyon that looks like a one-line sky. A wonder of nature in Chinese culture, where the canyons are so close together that it forms a straight line of the sky when someone looks up. Not only that, but there's also a hot spring inside this canyon, much to Lin Feng's joy as he undresses himself to soak in the warm, soothing waters. Look away, children. As he relaxes, Lin Feng ponders over the things he's accomplished in the past seven days. He has maintained the dark spirit for all that time, and he finds some really interesting skills. The dark spirit has the ability to improve his comprehension, allowing Lin Feng to grasp the fleeting shadow and sword drawing skill faster. A cheat skill if I'd ever seen one. However, keeping the dark spirit up exhausts too much energy for Lin Feng, and not something that he can use during combat. An understandable drawback to such a strong martial spirit. In addition to this, Lin Feng decided to keep the fact that he knows the sword drawing skill for the moment. He wants to keep the element of surprise after all, so if he's going to use the nine heavy waves martial technique for now, a smart choice. You always never let your opponent know what you have in your pocket after all. It's here that you begin to hear someone singing, causing him to become alert, only to see a beautiful, pink-haired woman also in the hot springs. Lin Feng immediately tries to sneak away. It would be impolite if I peeked. This is getting awkward. I should hurry up and leave to avoid any misunderstanding. He thought to himself, a pretty good move. Sadly for our protagonist, the woman was able to hear him and immediately assumes that he was peeking and then tries to kill him with an arrow fired with 7,000 pounds of force. If I didn't dodge it, I'd probably be dead. Lin Feng thought as sweat dripped from his brow. How he was able to dress up so quickly is an amazing feat, though. Hagen, it's merely a misunderstanding. You don't need to be this ruthless, he said, trying to defuse the volatile situation to no avail. As the woman thought that shameless peeping Tom should die a graveless death and fired another powerful arrow, Lin Feng counters with his 
Nine heavy waves, martial skill, but was only able to deflect their trajectories before the deflected arrow turned back towards him. What sort of imba shenanigans is this? I remember now. He thought to himself, she's Li Yufei. She's the only ninth Qi layer martial artist in the outer sect of Unhigh Sect with a bow spirit. Outer Sect is basically the starting point of a cultivator, with Inner Sect being the next progression path. Her high-level bow spirit has the ability to lock onto targets, so it really is Imbot, Cheater. If I can't dodge it, I'll have to use that move. Which he did, when he used his sword drawing skill in order to cut down the next arrow that Li Yufei shot at him. I, Lin Feng, will remember today's incident. He said, before he bravely ran away using Fleeting Shadow. Why he said his name when he ran away I will never know. Li Yufei tries to follow after him, but thanks to his new agility skill, he is long gone. Li Yufei was somewhat impressed by Lin Feng's ability to scatter her bow spirit and the sheer speed of his escape. However, no matter who you are, if you dare show your face in front of me again, I, Li Yufei, will cut you into a thousand pieces. With a vow like that, I plan on not being in the same house as this woman. Back to Lin Feng, he finally managed to get to a long enough distance for him to comfortably rest. She wants to kill me just because she disagrees with me. I didn't expect the rumored beauty Li Fei to have such a violent temper. He mutters to himself, to be fair, you did see her bear, but eh. I can't win against the ninth Qi layer martial artist right now. Thank God I was quick to run away. Remember, Lin Feng is currently 7th Qi layer. Li Yufei is 2 levels beyond him currently. Lin Feng laments at the world's cruelty for a few moments before resolving himself. If he doesn't get stronger, he won't survive. After all, the world he's living in is one where the strong are the only ones respected and have the right to speak, choose and live. If you're strong enough, human lives can be considered as grass and cut down without consequences. I wouldn't want to live in a world like that myself, but the MC wants what he wants. Once I use my sword drawing skill, people will be aware of it. It'll be hard for me to use it on the same people again. This skill should only be used as a last resort. Lin Feng thought to himself as he plans to learn another skill with more overwhelming power in order to mask the fact that he has sword drawing skill when he was interrupted by a fair maiden who asks Lin Feng to join their group of four in hunting demon beasts in the Black Wind Ridge. Suspicious. Still, the enticing reward of evenly split materials in addition to wanting to test out his new skills made Lin Feng join the group of four. He just needs to keep one eye open on them. At Lin Feng's introduction, the young master in white robes began to act up, telling them to not bring Lin Feng with them unless they wanted him to hold them all back. Oh, who is this man to say that to our MC? Watch your words. Before you say someone else is trash, you need to evaluate yourself first. Lin Feng said in reply to the provocativeness. White robes companion diffuses the situation a bit, calling him Jing Feng and telling Lin Feng to forgive Jing Feng for his arrogance as he's the strongest of the four of them. He's going to do something stupid in the future, I can already tell. Lin Feng tells them that it would be nice if he is as sensible as you are. Yikes, that's a huge burn. Still, they begin to introduce themselves. The fair maiden that interrupted Lin Feng's thoughts to ask him to join them is Jing Yun. Jing Feng we already know about, he's an 8th Qi layer martial artist. The de facto leader of the group and the one that apologized for Jing Feng's arrogance is Qing Yi. And last but not least, is Han Man. What kind of name is that? Lin Feng once introduced himself again, and said that even if he's not strong, he'll do his best. He's being very modest here. The now group of five begin their trek to Black Wind Ridge. They need to get past a mountain to get there, but they're very eager. Jing Feng, Qing Yi, and Han Man distinguished themselves here as they fought off various demon beasts as they continue their trek. We're doing pretty well, already got 20 some demon crystals. Qing Yi said with a smile. Those are low level demon crystals. It's too early to be celebrating. Jin Feng said with a small scowl. Qing Yi admonishes Jin Feng a bit, saying that they can at least get some enhancement piddles with the 20 demon crystals they have. Yeah, and I don't think they found Black Wind Ridge's more powerful monsters yet. Qing Yi advises them to not hurry as they won't be able to handle high level demon beasts. But Hun Man is confident due to Jing Feng's presence. That was until he feels the ground vibrating due to the approach of the violent ape, an 8th level demon beast. All demon beasts in this current stage are classified from 1 to 10. Hun Man calls out to Jing Feng. We need your help with this one. Us 7th Qi layers won't be able to hurt it, he said. But Jing Feng, seeing this as a way to humiliate Lin Feng, tells him to defeat the violent ape by himself. 
Hold on. I think you haven't fought yet. Right, Lin Feng? Didn't you say you would do your best? Then we'll leave this huge ape to you. And there's the asshole coming out to play. Ching Yi immediately protests at this, saying that only Jean Feng can fight against the 8th level demon beast, and asks if he's sending Lin Feng to die. He kinda is. The prick. Say no more. I'll fight. Lin Feng said, causing Ching Yi and Hun Man to volunteer to fight with him as well. They're the real ones here. I, Lin Feng, appreciate your offers. It's not that I'm acting based on my emotions, I simply have confidence that I can win against this violent ape. You guys can just watch on the side. Lin Feng said before dashing off. Such confidence from our MC means that he's definitely winning. Lin Feng stops right in front of the violent ape as he activates his nine heavy waves. Let's see the results of my training. In an instant, Lin Feng suppressed the violent ape, causing Jing Feng to look in shock. Watch out, Lin Feng. It's going to attack. Ching Yi calls out as the violent ape prepares itself for a violent counter. Then I just need to finish it off before it does. Lin Feng said, before leaping up and hitting the violent ape seven times. One on each limb and three to the torso, causing it to fall over. Dead. And he didn't even use his sword drawing skill. Yet. Our MC is growing more profound. Lin Feng, you're a monster. Hun Man said in admiration as Lin Feng called out to the group to take the demon crystal out of the violent ape's body. Hun Man, you haven't seen the depths of our MC's power yet. The wind from the strike is still blowing. The waves are unstoppable. I didn't expect Brother Lin to be able to use nine heavy waves in its most profound form. Ching Yi said in awe. Looks like if we go encounter a ninth level demon beast, we can do whatever we want on Blackwind Ridge. Hunt Man said, his confidence rising at the power of their new member. As he should, our MC's cultivation is growing more profound after all. Chain Feng no, was unimpressed. He just got lucky and met an animal that only knows how to get beat up. What is there to be proud of? His words dismissed Lin Feng's achievement, with the rest of the group immediately going to Lin Feng's defense. I'm starting to like Hun Man and Ching Yi more. Jing Feng, you shouldn't say that. Lin Feng is indeed very strong. Yeah. Brother Lin isn't trash at all. I think you must have made a mistake. Hun Man and Ching Yi said in response. Jealousy really is very prevalent in cultivation man why I feel. Lin Feng downplays his achievement as well, saying that the violent ape fell before he got serious. This huge ape might not have lived up to its reputation after all, he says. He was about to say that they should keep exploring, when he felt a sinister presence and calls it out. Hun Man and Ching Yi looked in fear, with Jing Feng turning as well, only to see a ninth level demon beast, Nether Wolf. Hun Man invoked Murphy it seems. When did it get close to us? It's second only to a soul level demon beast, Jing Feng said. It's extremely cruel. It comes and goes without a trace and especially loves to torture people. As a reference, the scale of beasts range from common animals, normal beasts, soul beasts, all the way to beast god. The violent ape is lower compared to the nether wolf in rank, though both still count as normal beasts. Hey, you guys hurry up and go cover me. I'll figure something out, Jing Feng said, but Lin Feng holds them back. Go up there and fight it already. What are you guys retreating to the back for? Lin Feng then points out that Jing Feng wants Lin Feng and the rest to fight even though their cultivation levels aren't enough to fight the nether wolf. You must have wanted to use us as bait so you can escape, right? Lin Feng said. Seriously, move right there. Even I killed a huge ape with a higher level than me. Can you not kill the nether wolf by yourself? Lin Feng continued, really amping up the taunts on Jing Feng, as he calls Lin Feng a bastard for his actions. Fine. I'll let you see just how scary my 8th Qi layer sword spirit is. He said as he unleashes his Qi and his technique, Roaring Thunder Sword. However, the nether wolf dodged all of Jing Feng's attacks. It's too fast. Jing Feng thought as he tried to land a killing blow, before the nether wolf took advantage of Jing Feng overextending his strike, and ran him down. Totally deserved. Cheng Yi looks in dismay at this. Even Jing Feng can't do anything about the nether wolf. As expected, a ninth level demon beast is too strong for us. Don't panic. We can do it if we attack together, said Hun Man. But compared to the two of them, Lin Feng stayed calm and asked Ching Yi what's the nether wolf's weakness. He's going to do a one-hit kill, I think. Weakness. I remember its entry in the Demon Beast Guidebook. A nether wolf has strong attacks and incredible speed, but also a weak defense, especially in its neck area. Ching Yi said. He really prepared himself for this incursion, huh? 
The nether wolf attacks with its really fast claws to lower the chance of its neck being injured in a long fight. Well, that wolf is dead, because when it comes to a fight of speed, the MC always wins. Ching Yi then looks at Lin Feng in shock. Wait, Lin Feng, are you going to? As he said this, Lin Feng has already drawn his sword, unleashing his. Drawing sword skill, I'd like to see which one's faster, its claws or my sword, he said. As he delivers a killing blow on the nether wolf's neck, killing it in one strike. Truly exceptional, as expected of our protagonist. Ha, huh, how is this possible? I'm not mistaken, right? Lin Feng killed the nether wolf in one blow. Hun Man said in shock and awe. He didn't even use his martial spirit. He's one scary guy, said Ching Yi. He has a unique spirit though, but don't tell him that. It looks like this nether wolf isn't that big of a deal after all, Lin Feng said. You hit it in its weak point so of course it folds over easily. Lin Feng, that moved just now. Do you have a sword martial spirit? Ching Yi asks. A reasonable question, but an incorrect assumption, as Lin Feng says that it's just a skill related to using a sword. Sword drawing skill is a useful skill if used correctly, not gonna lie. Still, both Ching Yi and Hun Man tells Lin Feng that he should keep the Nether Wolf's demon crystal as he killed it, but Lin Feng tells them that they should still split the demon crystal evenly between them. That's what we agreed on from the start. I can't take this for myself, he said. Bro, think for yourself as well and take the generous offer. Hold on a minute. You guys are forgetting about me. A very unwelcome voice said, it's Jing Feng, who isn't dead, but laying on the ground like the worm that he is. You guys better take me to safety and give half of the demon crystals to me. Otherwise, I'll have you guys killed. Don't forget that my older brother knows I came with you guys to Blackwind Ridge, he said. Seriously. Hiding under the skirts of your stronger brother? Such cringe from this man. Ching Yi looked nervous at this, and for good reason, as Jing Feng's brother, Jing Hao, is number six of the Yun Hai Sex outer sect, and is at the peak of the ninth Qi layer. We shouldn't mess with him. If he wants half, then we should give him half. That's cowards talk Ching Yi. Grow stronger instead and beat Jing Hao instead. Jing Feng continued to talk a big game as he was lying on the ground. Come hold me up and you guys better treat me well. If anything happens to me, my brother will torture you guys to death. All of his threats are basically Draco Malfoy shenanigans. This doesn't scare Lin Feng, however, as he then begins to list out the grievances that he has to Jing Feng. And there's a lot of them. I have never offended you, but you keep seeing me as an eyesore. You wanted to use demon beasts to kill us all so you could take the demon crystals for yourself. Unfortunately for you, I killed them all. Lin Feng said while standing above Jing Feng. I endured all that only because we're both Yun high sex disciples. Our MC truly is merciful and tries to give everyone a second chance. I thought you would eventually apologize and repent, but it looks like you're scum through and through. Lin Feng draws his sword as he says this. Your older brother, like I care who he is, he said, as Jing Feng looks fearfully. I don't want the demon crystals anymore. As long as you guys save me, I promise I'll do anything. How about that? Please, just let me off the hook, he said, begging pathetically in the ground as he grovels for mercy. No mercy for this guy, please. Kill him, MC. Hun Man and Xing Yi tries to get Lin Feng to back down. Just let it go, they said. But Lin Feng is unmoved. How can you trust a bad guy like him? He asks them. If we save him today, with the way he behaves, he'll definitely bite the hand that feeds him. He says, before doing exactly as he said he would and killing Jing Feng with a single slash in his blade. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Xin Yi, Hun Man, and Jing Yun. I forgot that she was there, she didn't do much here. Look in shock at Jing Feng's death. Now what do we do? Ching Yi wondered as he looked shaken. I'll take sole responsibility for what I've done. If anyone asks what happened, tell them I killed Jing Feng. Lin Feng said as he sheathed his blade. I don't care what Qi Layer Jing Hao is, let him come after me. And we have set up for the next few chapters with that. Nice. Han Man, Jing Yun and Ching Yi, however, aren't going to let Lin Feng take sole blame for this killing. I, Han Man, am no coward. You don't need to shoulder this alone, Lin Feng. Let me take part in this. I have always disliked Jing Feng. Right. We will not stay out of this. We'll face the consequences together. That's right. We can't let you take it on alone, Brother Lin. Hun Man, Ching Yi, and Jing Yun said in response. I didn't expect them to vehemently refuse Lin Feng's offer. And neither did Lin Feng himself. Getting to know these true friends is worth the trip. He thought, thanking the three of them for thinking highly of him. 
It is my honor to make friends with you all today, he said. I can't tell if Lin Feng is smiling here, but I'd like to say that he is. If we keep going any further, I'm afraid we might encounter demon beasts that you and I can't handle. Let's return to the sect, prudent and cautious, a good thing to have in a world this cruel. The rest agree to this, as they already have some good high-level demon crystals that they can use to get enhancement pills and equipment thanks to Lin Feng's and their own efforts. As they walked off, Lin Feng looks back at Jing Feng's corpse. You couldn't escape the sins you committed, he thought to himself. Arrogant and rude people like you have no right to be martial artists. If I, Lin Feng, meet your kind again, I won't hesitate to kill. Yep, those kinds of scum have no right holding a weapon. He then sees a book poking out of Jing Feng's robes. And as he picks it up, he realizes that it's the Roaring Thunder Sword skill, the same skill that Jing Feng used against another wolf. I didn't expect you to carry this secret skill book with you. Great, this is mine now. Lin Feng thought to himself, Roaring Thunder Sword skill, in combination with the Sword Drawing skill, allows Lin Feng to do strong sword attacks and a last resort one-hit kill. Once mastered, Lin Feng thinks that Nadium and Ninth Chi layer would scare him. Once they return to the sect, the group goes their separate ways. Lin Feng wants to use the enhancement pills that he gained from the hunt to improve his cultivation through training, with Ching Yi advising him to go to the Stormy Gorge. That's where the strong fighters of the Yun Hai sect gather, Ching Yi said to him. Brother Lin, you're very gifted. I'm sure you'll cultivate Yun faster there. Truly good friends. These three, I hope they stay alive in a world this cruel. Now that you brought it up, I also plan to cultivate at Stormy Gorge. Hun Man said as well, Lin Feng, if fate permits, let's meet at Stormy Gorge. At least Lin Feng has a good friend in that place. Lin Feng accepts this advice and tells them that they should gather together every now and then before they all go their separate ways. Lin Feng, however, ponders about Stormy Gorge, the same place that he was beaten by his older brother, Lin Hung. I'm not the old trash Lin Feng anymore, he thought to himself as he entered the gorge vowing to himself that he'll get those that called him trash back for everything they said and done. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, and all that. It took Lin Fong a few days in order to reach 8th level Qi layer, but thanks to the enhancement pills, he's improved quite a bit without using his dark spirit. As he rests though, he hears an unwelcome voice, Lin Yun's older brother, Lin Hung. Is it time for some good old-fashioned vengeance? I believe I went way overboard yet you're still alive, you're pretty hard to kill. Lin Hong said arrogantly. Looks like I need to kill you for real this time. Trash like you has no right to inherit the position of the young lord of the Lin family. The arrogance of this man. Can't he tell how unfathomable our MC is compared to before? You're giving quite a big talk, Lin Hong replied. But did you think about what happened to Lin Yun in the end? Reminding Lin Hong about the fact that Lin Feng beat up Lin Yun in combat. This pisses off Lin Hong something fierce, as news of his brother's beating has reached him. You dare bring up my little brother? You haven't paid for when you hurt him during a clan meeting. Lin Hung said, his eyes narrowing in anger. But it only served to motivate Lin Feng to act. Great. Let's settle the old and new grudges we both have. But if you're willing to apologize, then I'll let you off. Such magnanimity from our MC, to offer forgiveness to someone that almost killed him. Sadly, Lin Hung didn't accept said offer. Did your brain stop working? You are but some trash. He roared out before attacking Lin Feng and punching him in the face, but it only left a bruise on Lin Feng's cheek, much to his shock. Is that all you've got, Lin Hung? Not only do you talk just like your little brother, but you are also just as stupid and incompetent. Lin Feng said before pushing Lin Hung away. Sick burn right there. I want to sure to return everything you gave me, Lin Feng said as he unleashed his nine heavy waves to push Lin Hung back, shocking his cousin at the power of his cultivation. Can't take it already? I'm just getting started. Lin Feng said as his hand glowed with awesome power, its loud roar calling out to defeat his cousin. Now here's the main event, Roaring Thunder Sword skill, unleashing his new attack at Lin Hung and causing him to cough blood and kneel in pain. Lin Feng held back though, sad, he should have offed him. Lin Feng, it's all my fault, I shouldn't have been eyeing the position of the young lord. I'm sorry for everything I've done, Lin Hung said, groveling on his hands and knees in front of Lin Feng. I can promise you anything you want, just let me go. Okay, please, Lin Feng. He's begging pathetically. What a worm. This seems to incense Lin Feng. Did you ever let me go when I begged you for mercy? He asked pitilessly, as Lin Hung knew he can't say yes to that question. That's, I deserve to die. 
I'm a f***ing bastard. But seeing that we're cousins, please spare my pathetic life, I'm begging you. He said, pulling on the family card. What trash? Oh, so you do know we're cousins. Lin Feng said, walking away from Lin Hung. Fine. Since you and I are from the same Lin family, I'll let you live. Oi. 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 You don't leave an enemy alive. But to prevent you from committing any more crimes, I'm crippling you. Lin Feng said as he speared Lin Hung through with several chi blades throughout his body, crippling his cultivation. Okay. We're good. I thought our MC was going to let him go unpunished. Lin Feng then tells Lin Hung that he shouldn't show his face in front of him anymore before walking off like a badass. Nice. This pisses Lin Hung off though, as he swears to make Lin Feng's life a living hell for the crime of crippling his cultivation. You really can't deal with it, bastard. I let him off easy this time because of the clan rule of no killing each other. But I won't do that if there's a next time. Lin Feng thought to himself, before dodging an arrow fired in his face. A very familiar arrow to boot. It was Liu Fei, who was also training on the Stormy Gorge. Peeping Tom, how dare you show up in front of me again, she said. Woman, he's a cultivator like you and his training. I let you escape last time, but I won't give you such a chance again. Now die. Jeez, she's really pissed off. What a small world we live in. Lin Feng thought to himself as he saw Liu Fei draw her bow in preparation for an attack. My cultivation wasn't enough last time. But with the way I am now, I don't even need to dodge these," he said as he rushed towards Li Yufei, his hand crackling with power as he crushed the arrows with his might. Much to Li Yufei's shock, you really think the MC won't get stronger? Foolishness. Humph, that's all there is to them. Lin Feng said as he tried to dash towards Li Yufei, but was stopped by a massive blade slamming to the ground in front of him. Interference in a fair fight? What a letdown. The man that interfered is Yu Hao an inner sect disciple of the Yun Hai sect and currently at soul level cultivation. This incensed Li Yufei a lot, as it's a personal matter and someone uninvolved shouldn't intervene. Your name is Lin Feng, right? We'll settle our matter later. This is it for today. You may leave. Li Yufei said, she's actually pretty honorable. Nice. What do you mean? Running away because you don't think you can beat me? Lin Feng asked, our MC is quite the cheeky one, isn't he? Don't be conceited, brat. Li Yufei retorts, Yu Hao is in Soul Lair. If he fights you, you'll die. I just don't want him to interfere. She said acerbically. She does have some fairness in her. Nice. Hymph. Then you better remember this. Our matter isn't over yet. Lin Feng said in reply as he walked off. Yu Hao wasn't going to let Lin Feng leave unmolested, however, as he fired off another attack towards Lin Feng. You and I hold no grudges towards each other. So why do you seek to exterminate me? Lin Feng asked as he activated his fleeting shadow, skill to dodge the attack and run away. Yu Hao, the day I step into the soul lair will be the day of your funeral. Lin Feng vowed as he vanished from the sight of Yu Hao and Li Yufei. Welp, that Yu Hao isn't long for this world. Yu Fei doesn't think that Lin Feng can reach the soul lair, but Li Yufei wasn't so sure. And wonders how strong Lin Feng is in order to have dodged a soul lair's sword spirit. Very strong for his current level, actually. Lin Feng was able to escape, but the experience left him concerned. He may have confidence in his speed, but in his current state, he can't beat the soul layer Yu Hao. I need to at least break through to the ninth Qi layer, then my one hit kill can then contend with the soul layer. He thought to himself before hearing his name be called. Long time no see, Hun Man said as he approached Lin Feng with Jin Yun. What a coincidence, where are you guys headed? Lin Feng asked, with Hun Man saying that they're there to look for Lin Feng. I remember you saying that you wanted to come train at Stormy Gorge. But why were you looking for me? Lin Feng asked. Hun Man said that he's worried his cultivation level is too low for Stormy Gorge due to the high number of expert fighters there. So he asked if Lin Feng is willing to accompany them. Knowing your weakness is pretty A-OK -okay with me so long as you strive to get stronger. Even though I'm not that courageous, I have thick skin. So I'm pretty durable in a fight. Hun Man said, with Jin Yun eagerly stating that if Lin Feng joins them, they won't have to worry about other fighters picking on them. Lin Feng agrees to come with them, making Hun Man happy before giving Lin Feng a mask. It's for avoiding trouble, Hun Man said as he wore his own mask. Fighting one another always results in someone losing, which leads to grudges, so it's best to hide our identities from others. Makes sense, you don't want other people's grudges to follow you after all. Lin Feng, Hun Man, and Jin Yun walk off to Stormy Gorge, prepared for anything that Stormy Gorge will throw at them. 
The gorge is the biggest training area that the Yunhai sect has, and cultivators often go there to spar against each other. This is also where the rankings for cultivators are shown, with Qi layer being the beginner rank, soul layer for intermediate, and profound layer for expert. Those in Stormy Gorge want to improve their cultivation by any means necessary, up to the point of pulling dirty tricks or killing the person they sparred with, which sucks. As they were walking though, a masked cultivator jumped down from above, asking them if anyone was willing to spar with him. Hun Man agrees immediately. I didn't think we would find an opponent this soon. Allow me to comply? It would be my honor to spar against a stronger opponent. He said with a boisterous grin, with Lin Feng telling him to be careful. Always have a pinch of caution when dealing with mysterious cultivators. It helps you live longer. The masked cultivator attacks first, punching Hun Man's outstretched palm and sending him flying. Hun Man is shocked at the fact that he couldn't stop the blow. Just so you know, I'm a ninth Qi layer. If you don't get real serious, you'll lose miserably. The masked man said, How interesting, who is this man? This only inflames Hun Man's determination, as he ripped his clothes off, just the shirt. Thank God. Oh? Are you going to transform or something? The masked man said in amusement, with Hun Man confirming that he's getting more power. I'm going all out, he said, unleashing his earth spirit. An earth spirit. Not bad. It's a rare one. He said as he held out his hand and gathered chi. I'll use my martial spirit too. Once he finished gathering his chi, he attacked Hun Man, their fists meeting furiously. But Hun Man was the loser in the exchange. He's doing relatively well though, being able to hold his ground against someone stronger. Hun Man costs some blood, but his fighting spirit is roused. Yes, as expected from a ninth chi layer. He roared out, asking for more. What chat of a side character? His opponent was impressed. You're still acting tough even though you just suffered internal injuries. You're one hell of a man. He is, yes. Still, Hun Man isn't done, as he charged up his earth martial spirit into one final attack. Mountain shaking lion roar, which his opponent immediately countered with a punch, sending Hun Man back again. Huh, so my all out attack can barely stop your advance. You're strong. I candidly admit defeat. Hun Man said, finally surrendering. Meanwhile, his opponent wiped some blood spilled on his lip and praised Hun Man. You're not bad yourself. You managed to injure me even though my attack was flawless. Looks like there's more to you than just brute force. Well done. Half praise and half insult. What a guy. I won't be as merciful next time. Farewell. The masked martial artist said, before flying off. Strange, I have a feeling that he will be someone important in the future. Hun Man's thoughts were on the fight itself after it was over. I actually hurt him. He thought to himself. To be honest, I was only blocking naturally. I didn't have the intention to attack. It's at this point though, that he realized something about the final exchange of blows. Wait, naturally? I got it. If I forcefully took his fist head on, my two hands would be broken. Who could have thought that my unintentional actions saved myself? Oh, could this be? Lin Fong approached Hun Man, asking if he was okay after the wounds he took, only to look shocked as he realized that Hun Man is meditating. His friend has reached enlightenment, much to his shock. He immediately sets Jin Yun aside, as it's best to not bother someone when they're in the middle of enlightenment. Let's stay here and not bother him, he said. You don't interrupt someone when they're in the middle of realizing something important. Enlightenment is a crucial step for cultivators in this world, as the quality of their cultivation would grow by leaps and bounds after they finish attaining enlightenment. Interruption during his process will make the enlightenment fail and might even cause serious internal injuries. Here's hoping that you won't be disturbed. Just how many people can only dream of this happening to them? Lin Feng thought to himself as he observed Hun Man's meditation. I can't believe Hun Man reached enlightenment before me. Looks like I need to work harder too. You see this? Motivate yourself with the success of your peers, not drag them down. As Lin Feng was pondering about the future though, he sensed someone approaching. Who's there? He called out, when to see a fireball hit Hun Man in the back, interrupting his enlightenment. Really dishonorable. Not cool. Lin Feng was furious. Enlightenment is one of the greatest dreams of a cultivator, and someone stopped his friend from attaining it. Who did it? Bastard. You dare hurt my friend with such dirty tactics. He said, just as a man approached them. What? I just think you guys are eyesores. Was that not allowed? He asked while his right hand burned with fire. You're an eyesore here with that stupid hair though. Oh, that's allowed. But I'll make you pay for that. Lin Feng growled out, was interrupted by Hun Man, who told him that he'll take care of the interloper himself. But your wounds. 
Lin Feng said in concern. Brother Hun Man, just rest man. Lin Feng asks Hun Man if he's sure about this decision, but Hun Man is certain. I appreciate your kindness, Brother Lin, but I must defeat him with my own hands. If I die, then please avenge me. Death flag, right here. The man confidently jerked his thumb behind him, asking Hun Man if he has the guts to fight in the life and death arena. Located at the center of Stormy Gorge, and is the biggest arena in the Yun Hai sect. I have a bad feeling about this, saying that it's boring to fight here. Hun Man retorts that he's not afraid of someone as despicable as him, and that he accepts. The rest of the disciples in the life and death arena watch on, waiting for the match to start. Once you get on stage, your life and death will be decided by fate. I won't go easy on you. The man said, with Hun Man trudging forward to battle with Lin Feng telling him that he must be careful. Kempf. I'll teach this bastard a lesson. Hun Man said as he walked forward, his eyes alight at the challenge. He's not gonna last long, I feel. After some pre-fight banter, the fight begins with the now introduced Jiang Huai introducing himself. After he said that he'll take Hun Man's life, shocking Hun Man. How does he know my name? He wonders as Jiang Huai starts his attack. Jiang Huai begins by using his Roaring Flame Palm, which Hun Man dodges before countering with his own Mountain Splitting Fist. Jiang Huai was shocked at Hun Man's strength, as expected of a guy that the MC acknowledged. Before Jiang Huai grabbed hold of some sand and threw it at Hun Man's face. How despicable. Hun Man roared out as Jiang Huai dodged Hun Man's next attack easily before slamming a roaring flame fist on Hun Man's back before he began to pepper Hun Man's back with a barrage of fireballs. How dastardly. Still, this isn't looking good for Hun Man. Lin Feng looked horrified at this and called out for Jiang Huai to stop at once before someone got in his way. Now that they've stepped into the life and death arena, it won't end until one of them is dead. No helping allowed. Ah, a helper. Their shamelessness knows no bounds. Who are you? Get out of my way. Lin Feng said, Jing Yun knows exactly who this man is, Jing Hao, causing Lin Feng to realize who he's dealing with. Don't even think about helping, just stand there and watch. Or else, I'll kill you. Jing Hao said, Our MC doesn't care though. Oh yeah, you and my army? He asked, before vanishing in front of Jing Hao's sight and grabbing hold of Jiang Huai's arm just before he can attack Hun Man's back again. The real battle begins here. Stop it, you despicable man. Lin Feng said, mind your own business. Hun Man is who Jing Hao wanted me to kill. Why did a nobody like you interrupt me? Jiang Huai said furiously. It's really trying to court death here. So it was Jing Hao, I see now. Settle down. He flings Jiang Huai away before calling on Jing Hao. You want to take revenge for your little brother, right? The one who killed him was me. It has nothing to do with Hun Man and the others. And the gauntlet is thrown. If you want revenge, then come after me and me alone. There's no point plotting against my friends. Jiang Hao smirked when he learned of this. No wonder. I thought it was weird that Hun Man could win against my brother. Very well, you must be fearless to bring yourself forward like this. More than fearless, he's the MC. He tells Jiang how to stand down, but he's not doing this out of the goodness of his heart. Oh no, I'm going to avenge my little brother. Meanwhile, Lin Feng hoists Hun Man on his shoulder as he walked him down the arena. You should relax and focus on your recovery, he said. Leave the rest to me. Our MC takes care of his friends. However, Jiang Huai is shameless and changed his mind about a fair fight. There's no reason to stop once we're in the life and death arena, he said as he charged his power and fired off his technique. Flame spirit secret, flame explosion, you two should just die. Jing Hao will kill you guys later anyway. Shameless brat, have you no honor? Lin Feng noticed the attack and immediately dodged using Fleeting Shadow to the shock of Jiang Huai. Where'd they go? He looks around for Ling Hang, only for him to be hit with the Roaring Thunder Sword skill as Lin Feng appears behind him. Your name is Jiang Huai, right? You're acting so arrogant when you're merely Jing Hao's lapdog. Lin Feng said as his aura surged around him. Our MC's righteous anger is surging forth. Before I deal with Jing Hao, I should kill you first, he said, angering Jiang Huai who fired off several fireballs using his infinite fireballs technique. They don't even look infinite. How arrogant. Not only that, but it didn't even scratch Lin Feng, with him even asking if that's all Jiang Huai has. The answer to this is yes. The crowd began to mutter as they watched this unfold. 
Didn't expect that guy to know Warring Thunder Sword skill. No wonder he could kill Jing Hao's little brother. But he went and provoked Jing Hao. Looks like he's tired of living. And all these things were being said. More like Jing Hao is tired of living. Lin Feng unfurled his robe as he prepared to fight Jiang Huai first. But Jing Hao refused. Jiang Huai is one of mine. Before you attack one of my people, you have to ask me for permission. He said. He really wants to die first. Lin Feng couldn't understand why he wanted to protect a man as despicable as Jiang Huai. But he didn't care. I don't need your permission. I'll be killing Jiang Huai today. Before unleashing his roaring thunder sword skill against Jing Hao's own. This infuriates Jing Hao, as this skill is a secret technique passed down in their family. You bastard aren't fit to use it. He roared as he swung his hand and attacked Lin Feng again. Lin Feng retorted that he can use whatever he wants so long as he's strong enough before countering Jing Hao's attack with thunder teeth, much to his opponent's shock. Jing Hao didn't expect that some nobody was able to use the roaring thunder sword skill to the extent that Lin Feng did. To be fair, he cheated, but semantics. Still, Lin Feng had enough of this farce as he pointed his palm towards Jian Huai, infuriating Jing Hao. I'm telling you to stop. You want me to torture you to death? He roared out. Funny, your brother said the exact same thing. Lin Feng said as he attacks Jian Huai with roaring thunder sword skill. The screams of Jian Huai as he was killed in raging Jing Hao and he grits his teeth. You'll be doing it a whole lot more after the MC beat your ass.